Welcome to the talk show, The Power of Women in Business, the show for international business women to get inspired with best practices and insights on how to scale up your business internationally. Your host is Tineke Rensen from Holland. She is well known for supporting female business owners to expand their business massively and internationally. Tineke is an international business expert for 28 years and is the author of the book, Maximum Business Growth for Women. It is time that women step up and create bigger businesses so that women can make a bigger impact in the world. Enjoy this powerful show as Tineke Rensen and her guest expert combine their brilliance in business to help you take your business to the next level. All right. Hi there. Here we are. And we're having yet another episode of the talk show, The Power of Women in Business, where I interview experts in the field who are very well established and know what is specific about doing business or doing business with women internationally. And today I have two experts. They have a business together and it's Nadine Dill and it's Yudelki. Uh, Escobos. So, hi ladies, how are you today? Awesome, thank you. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Beautiful. We're doing great, thank you so much for having us here. So, let me introduce the two of you so our viewers know who you both are. Nadine and Yudelki are Europe's leading funnel flow architects and they will explain all about that. Yudelki is a software engineer and website designer that moved herself from the South Bronx to Wall Street. And Yudelki is the one with the dark hair. <laughs> uh, and Nadine Dill is an award-winning marketing strategist and copywriter with swift roots and real growth experience in the startup nation Israel. So she had a few businesses there. Together, they have co-founded InspireWorks and the fabulous Women Entrepreneurs Academy. Currently, they have a podcast, a Facebook group that seeks to empower women entrepreneurs in their quest to financial freedom and abundant quality life. And InspireWorks, they look at a business web presence and coach or implement small and bigger tweaks to increase a business turnover. For every client they get, they give a loan of 25 US dollars to women entrepreneurs in poor countries to reinforce their impact in the world. Wow. You both have a lot of, a lot of experience, girls. <laughs> and I'm really proud and honored having you here in my podcast. And as our guests can see, it's the first time we have an interview with three of us. <laughs> So, ladies, um, this is a, a talk show for uh, to start doing business international or tips international. So, what would you suggest? Starting a national, go international, start uh, international immediately. Yeah. So, as we are experts in looking, what does what needs to happen to a lead in order that on a, on the web presence or the website it converts into a paying client so we're actually asking the questions where are your clients at like what is the offering you have and where are your clients so if your offering is something that is restricted to your language um, then obviously you can market there where they speak this language now as a swiss person it's a very funny situation because we don't really speak the the, the normal german like switzerland has four languages german french italian and Romance. and the swiss language is 21 uh, tw 11 11 uh, dialects so obviously I have to decide what is the language that I want to use do I want to be in my little area with my little dialect do I want to go all German speaking countries which are more countries or do I want to have it in English where I can reach the whole world so uh, from our perspective um, if the leads if the people the clients are out there first understanding English or the language you talk and second are interested to find your services internationally 
there is no barrier or reason not to go international. So we do encourage you to go international if you have these two um, things uh, to your advantage, but also don't spread yourself too much. So it's a lot also about network building. And you can start this in your country, also if you choose, let's say, the English-speaking audience, and then also to trans um, to pass the borders to other, you know, inspiring co-creators in your niche to get into their network, to work with them, to find them. Yeah. Wow. I love I love what you say about the language. Uh, and yeah, I think you are the country in Europe with the most languages and then all the dialects. I, I really don't understand the Swiss <laughs> and Swiss dialects. Um, and, and, and you two are a perfect example as well, because Nadine, you live in Switzerland, Yudelke, you live in Germany. So you already have an international business amongst the two of you. That's right. <laughs> Wow. So um, you also focus on women entrepreneurs, same, same as I do. What tips do you have um, for women entrepreneurs uh, to manage their time between business, family and, and their self? That's a very important question. And uh, as you know, I'm a marathon runner and I'm dedicated to making sure that the time is actually allocated to the right um, to the right project at the right time. And so for us, we have actually developed and thought through a system together to give out to women. And that is, you know, we know that we have a lot of things to juggle with. So generally, and if you have kids or if you have another job, etc., you should divide your time into power time, toggle time, me time, planning time. Okay, so in order for you to really get everything or get the most out of your 24 hours, you really need to be very specific as to where you spend your time and when. Um, if you have children, for example, and you only have half a day, and um, these are what we call our power time. That means we get to do stuff where we can invest 100% of our concentration on. Like we need to be concentrated to get that job done. And then you get toggle time, which is maybe when the kids are home or when you're, you know, um, you, you're, you're, you're home, you have all their family around, etc. In that time, you only spend... Uh, or you only need about 50% of the concentration to get to execute that bit. And that would be sort of like emails and, um, you know, answering or, or scheduling something that it's, that it's quick and it doesn't require your 100% uh, concentration to execute it and get it done. There is also obviously the me time. And the me time is very important because yeah. if you go into a business and you do not have any me time already planned in your calendar, you're going to feel that you're giving yourself too much to that business. And you're going to get burned out. And then you're going to be like, this business is not worth it. Like, look at me. I'm a wreck. We don't want you to go there. So basically, this is something that uh, both Nadine and I have actually pretty down packed. And it's like, even if it's half an hour when you get up in the morning, whatever it is your favorite activity to do that makes you feel complete, that makes you feel like you've done something for yourself, like you've taken care of yourself, go on and do it, right? For me, it's getting up and running. Okay, for other people, it may be meditating or doing yoga or reading a book or, I don't know, contemplating the weather on that morning, just drinking a cup of coffee. Whatever it is, just make sure that you take care of yourself first because without you, there is no business. Yeah. Okay? So it's important to do that. Another thing that we actually really recommend is planning the week. So planning the week ahead of time. So where do I, where do I schedule me time? Where is my power time? Where is my planning time? Planning. If you're also taking care of a household, planning your household chores and household to-dos is very important. Like having an entire week's worth of meal plan, for example. You know, it sounds tedious, but you got to eat. If you don't eat, you're not taking care of yourself. Okay? <laughs> Blocking the sleeping time. It's not work time, ladies. It's sleep time. Because at night, the brain actually consolidates everything that has happened during the day. And if you're also working and plowing through the night, you're not going to get the best uh, concentrated time during your power times. Okay? So planning and ma managing your time is all a matter of sitting down in front of a calendar and just blocking out literally. This is my me time. Uh, this is my power time. And during this power time, I'm going to execute 
these things that I cannot be um, that I cannot be interrupted uh, for. This is my toggle time. This is my eating time, and this is my sleep time. So this is how you actually break the day and are able to um, uh, you're able to do the concentrated work and get more stuff done when you actually plan it out ahead of time. Yeah. Wow. You and you both have kids, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, me, me too. Mine are teenagers, so they, they can cook now if they want to. <laughs> uh, you know, when, when your business grows, and I think that should always be the goal of everybody who starts a business, you know, because I really want women to have bigger businesses, this planning becomes easier because you, you, will, you will, might, might want to have an au pair or you might have a cleaning lady or you might have a gardener. So um, stuff gets easier when your business gets bigger. The planning gets easier because you can outsource stuff to other people. But when you're still in the face, when it's me, myself and I, uh, yeah, this is, this is very important. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think also even if you have people that come in to help, you also need to put them in the plan, right? Because as a, at the end of the day, you're re, you're depending on that person to come in and get that stuff done for you. And if that person fails because it's sick or whatever thing, so everything, whatever resources that you have need to be all in the planning, right? Yeah. Also a plan B when there is no, uh, you know, you don't know if that resource is going to be available on that particular day. Except yeah. And do you advise to have that in your calendar or do you advise to visualize it so that you can see it all in one go? Absolutely in the calendar. Actually, I'm big on calendars and also digital calendars. So I have everything on Google. Um, in order to manage, for example, I have two kids, so they all have appointments. They have doctor's <laughs> appointments. They have appointments with, uh, they have extracurricular activities. They have tests. They have all of these that I also need to manage, right? Because we are also the chief managers of our households as well as our businesses. So each one of my kids has a calendar in a different color. Right. And I bring all of our calendars together. That is my personal calendar, my business calendar together with Nadine, my kids calendar. Uh, each one has their own. And then I have a general household calendar, which means that um, my, you know, the dads, because I'm separated. Right. But we need to be in communication as to what goes on in the household. So if I'm not there, he knows where he needs to be picking up. Yeah. So a general household calendar that is managed and and that's really how i manage absolutely every single time time slots yeah so you you really are the systems lady yeah yeah yes. not only is it about managing the time but you have also created that you always need to see what is your goal because if you don't work or, or manage this calendar towards a goal then you're never going to achieve it as she as she said she's a marathon runner Runner. If you don't know where to run and what to run and what is your path, you're most definitely going to get lost. And that's we also created. Uh, we start with a one-year planner, and then we've got a three-year planner, one-year planner. Then we boil it down to a 90 days planner. And for all these things, we have only one to three goals that we want to achieve. A 30 days uh, planner that is you know to 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 um, substantialize from the 90 days the goals and we take the 30 days to, to weekly goals and then we have daily goals and when we have in all this system always the goals in mind then we're actually really seeing our progress seeing how we go yeah. step by step towards uh, success and yeah climbing the Himalaya is really doing one step at a time but in the right direction. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. That's right, Nadine. And that, you know, going on into more into that, into the goal planning, um, one actual, one thing that actually keeps, um, it keeps me on track. I literally take that daily planner and I literally have, what's the plan today? What am I going to do today? I, I jot down absolutely everything down to, uh, from business to personal, because life is, a mixture of everything, right? Am I going to go grocery shopping today? It goes in in some sort of the planner, like maybe during toggle time. Oh, wow. The kid is playing football. But then in the morning, very early in the morning, what do I do? First, obviously, this, this um, 
the focus time, right, where you need 100% of your concentration, what we call power time, that is where the business to-dos go in, right? And then toggle time, there are other things. Uh, going, maybe maybe doing that training that I didn't do in the morning because now I need more time, not, nor, not just a half an hour. So I will do it when my kid is doing football, one entire hour and a half. Right? Yeah. So this is how you go and you plan your day. But this is how I plan it. And because we are not perfect, then I have right next to it the reality, right? Because you can plan that you're going to be creating a funnel uh, or a website or a conversation or a system in three hours, and then you bump into hiccups along the way that takes you five hours. So I have the plan, and then I have the reality. Because when I come in the next day, I know what's left to do from the plan from the previous day, and I budget at that in. Because right. it's very easy to... It's very easy to kind of, you know, oh, forget it, I didn't do it, or, you know, it slides under the carpet, and then it just never gets done. Right? Mm. So I always think it's better to get it done imperfectly, also imperfectly in the planning, than to not get it done at all. So yeah, I, 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 I totally, to to yeah. Days, it took two days, but it's done. Yeah. Yeah, and you know that that also makes you feel good. So, so just to make sure that that our listeners and our viewers will not see you as the planning ladies, this is just one thing you do uh, because otherwise they cannot uh, go from a lead to a paying client because that's really the conversation the two the two of you are all about. So, so how do you do that? What do you bring in place to come from a lead as somebody who has heard of you or somebody you have heard of and know or you maybe have seen them once or maybe they, they have seen your social media uh, presence? How do you go from a lead to a conversion? Because that's your specialty. Exactly. So it has kind of a lot to do with planning. Yes. <laughs> that loop because the question is once I know who my lead is and that is you know the marketing part and, and you I heard that you had a, a previous uh, um, show with with a social media specialist so once you know how to attract clients once you know who they are and where they are and what they read and what they like and what their problem is that you're going to solve then you think about a strategy or, or let's rather say a conversation that you can get them engaged into your solutions that you show it to them in a non-salesy but conversational manner that makes them interested and then engaged and then uh, um, ready to you know take the next step working towards you so um, we do this with uh, sometimes we um, with, with the strategy that we call an ask campaign, so we just you know ask, look what works, what would be the okay, just effect. just to interrupt you uh, because I can I can hear a question in our viewers. This is all about online conversations, eh? That's right. Okay, good. Right. Yeah. Yes. So some have on their website a lead magnet, and there is already this is the first thing that you can play with. Uh, what is the lead magnet? What is it that you want to give them for free or for a small small fee um, that will take them to the next level? And that is how you qualify yourself. Now, you can obviously try several lead magnets, but we always recommend to have only one thing or one action that you that you want them to take on your website. So if you have a website, then go here and read that and uh, follow us there also on social media. So that's a very confusing website. A very structured website would just give them the one next step that will take you there. So it can be a landing page with one lead magnet. You want to test another one? Have another landing page with another lead magnet. A lead magnet? A lead magnet? A le can you explain the lead magnet? Yes, sure. Sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, that is something that is something attractive to your target audience that they will want to know or be or have 
in order to the next step. So for example, our lead magnet is to invite people to do an assessment with their website so that they can get feedback about what works and what doesn't. Uh, another example is that I have a client, she is a cancer coach and she gives five tips to people um, how to first prevent um, cancer and then also battle. So, to download these five tips, that she puts it on her website, someone puts in the email, um, with the email the, these tips are sent, and then uh, she's got the email address and can then communicate um, with, with this prospect. And that is already the next step of the funnel. This is a very good uh, opportunity to actually uh, introduce yourself, start a conversation without any selling, without any marketing, just, you know, to establish an online relationship, which is very uh, important, especially if you do international business, because there, obviously, you can't meet all the persons of people, prospects, one-on-one -on -one or face-to-face. -face. So what you want to do is to introduce yourself, your values, your mission, and especially how you help them, like give them examples, how you have helped others, and they will understand by that um, how, what is the solution that you offer. And this is in a very, you know, conversational conversation. And then in this conversation, you can already show them the next step. So what is the next step? Is it a call? Is it a booking a meeting? Is it um, a, a certain service that they want to buy? And, and Accordingly, we build the, the customer journey one step at a time and we look what needs to happen with the pros, prospect, what do they need to learn, know, be, in order for them to take their next step and then we make it as simple and easy as possible that this will also really happen. And maybe Judelki wants to uh, add some more uh, about the system that she's creating Make this happen. Yeah, so just, just to summarize, uh, Nadine, so the lead uh, will appear uh, online on your website because of your social media activities or because of uh, they uh, have heard of you or because of you do some paying advertising, any, any so they, they come on your site and then they find your lead magnet, yeah? And from there, how they go from your free ebook, your five tips, your uh, whatever, that's then the journey you help your clients and uh, the women to, to create. Exactly. So it's. Sorry, I didn't get the question. No, I'm just summarizing it. So, to, 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 yeah. to in, in a few sentences, so to make it clear. Um, yes. All right, so if you say exactly, uh, yes. it's, it's clear. Sorry. So it's the marketing part that brings them to your website. Yeah. And now the online sales part, the funnel system will bring them to a sale. Yeah. And that is what we specialize in. Exactly. All right, but that's, that's to have a conversation. That's the words. It also has to work and it also has to look nice. And that's where you come in, Udelki, isn't it? That's right. So basically, we look at this entire conversation and uh, we make it simple. Okay, well, I make it simple. It's my job to make it simple and understandable uh, for anybody that actually doesn't know much about systems. So um, it, at the end of the day, you need, when people come to your website, and this is something that I, I didn't put much uh, value on before I started working uh, on funnels, and that is, when people come to your website, they need to feel well in your website, right? So they need to come in and they need to feel that they can trust you. And the trust in you is a two-step, you know, two-step process, right? The one thing is the conversation. So basically the text that you put on your website. And the other part is actually the, the design, the layout, the, you know, the structure and how you actually introduce this text, okay? So if you have somebody, um, I don't know, if you have, um, it's like somebody coming into your apartment and everything is tossed all over the place. The first thing they want to do is probably leave because it's too stressful, it's not comfortable, it's not well. So people need to feel that your message actually is also um, not only in text but visually attractive, 
okay? And this is what I come in when we design our systems. So the prettiness of it, I used to actually undervalue a lot because I am a, I'm a hardcore techie, like I code lines of code that talk to the computer. So the front end was like, oh yeah, whatever, that's the front end, that's cool, you just drag and drop. But it really has, it really has um, an impact. It has a first impression, let's say, on the people that come into your website. So it's important that you pay attention to that. Yeah, okay. the client the client gives nothing about what you code. It has to look nice, they have to rec be recognized. And, yeah. <laughs> exactly. exactly, but you know, I'm like, I'm wired like that, like I'm wired into hexadecimal. So you had to change. <laughs> <laughs> but, but nevertheless, you know, once you have that front end that people feel comfortable in, and once they enter that email and click that button, things need to work. So you still need to get into the background of it and actually make this conversation happen. And the way that this happens is if you use the right system and there are plenty of them out there that actually help you, um, one, tag your 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 lead along the way and understand what their behavior is on your page on your funnel on your website once you know that then you can have the right conversation with the right person because there is nothing more annoying than to get like a general email hey um look at this you know and it has nothing to do with your interaction with this person's business because you have done it so general and you haven't thought about really what is this person really thinking or meaning or uh, where were they hesitant? How can I bring them into the next step? So this is why it's important to build a system behind this pretty website that actually tags your clients along the way. Okay, just just explain just explain what tag means. <laughs> okay, so basically there are. Um, there are systems out there, right? There are funnel softwares and also other platforms because we do have way too many options these days. That can be confusing in a podcast for another day. But um, tagging means that when the when you have a lead, okay, the system that you use to build your funnel allows you to put um, to put a tag on this email address, right? So that means that I came in through my 18 tips to have a better website and so basically when they come in through this page then i will immediately say this person came in through 18 tips to have a better website or this person can aim to came into our system through funnel flow analysis like they want to analyze their online presence and so basically i know exactly at which point they enter our world our business world online okay and then not only that i am able to once we have the lead you're able to actually follow along did they open the email did they click on the link did they uh leave the video halfway and so these are different conversations right maybe they didn't open the email so you don't want to send the next email saying um, hey, so now that you uh, scheduled this appointment or now that you did this, do that. But they haven't really done that other stuff. So this is where putting a tag on the email address in the system that you use becomes useful because then you know what kind of conversation to have, where to bring them to so that they come to the ultimate goal of one, trusting you and two, buying from you. Yeah, so, so somebody comes in here and then he goes this way, but if he doesn't do this, he doesn't go here, but he goes there. If he doesn't okay. do this, he will go here. Uh, you know, usually people always go like this, but whatever they don't do, they go here and have a different route, or they go here and have a different route. So they will get different emails all the time. Whatever they do, you can track it. Yeah. Exactly. And then accordingly, we can have a, a different or a a more qualified conversation yeah. for example your uh, example to delki about the 18 tips so i know that everyone who has already downloaded these 18 tips i can now send them an email and say hey after you have downloaded 18 tips in 2019 here are the updates for 2020 and then they already feel more understood because yeah. they know that we know that they have read them Whereas if someone came in through, through the assessment, then we can say, hey, are you interested to also receive 18 tips? And 
someone who has received them already does do, don't doesn't want to get such an email. No, exactly. Qualify our conversation. And it's it's really good for you viewers to know that there is software who can manage all of this. And it can become very technical, and that's where you come in, Yudelki, to get rid of all the overwhelm. You can you can program all this, you can set all the features, you can de and, and and you write all the content, uh, Nadine, so that when somebody has not opened the 18 tips, they will not get an email like, "How did you like the 18 tips?" But they will get an email like, "Hey, I see you have not been able to open the 18 tips. You know, here is the link again, just to, to just to remind you and help you and." And that's how you go along. That's right. Beautiful. That's right. It makes them more personalized. They feel more understood. And so this is the, the reason why, you know, building a system behind your beautiful front end is very important. And the beauty of it is it's obviously automated. You do it once because you've already thought about that journey that they may be taking, the is and then or. Right? Yeah. And then you can... Set those emails ahead of time, set that conversation ahead of time on uh, predicting the behavior of your visitors. Yeah, exactly. And once this is all tested, because that, that will take some time, eh? because you, you need to get to know your audience along the way. Where do they click? How much time does it take them? How much percentage? Once that's all sorted out, only then it's worth sending traffic to it, I suppose. That's right. We... Um look at it as, as a system that we first want to be sure that we know how do we make money yeah. and only then we look at it like the whole system of this online presence is like to have a vehicle, like to have a car. Now if you have a beautiful and potentially fast car but it stands in the garage, it's a nice pretty asset but it, does, it doesn't help other than... Um, you know, ha having the joy of going myself down in the garage looking at it. So this is a website that is existing and doesn't get marketing. Now others do a lot of marketing and they invest a lot of time or a lot of money. And then if you don't have a converting website, um, all the, the, the effort, investment in time and money is just lost. Okay, so we strongly advise that you have at least a minimal converting website that whatever you're doing the marketing part that something is coming out of it and then when you know that this works you can improve it by the day now you um, add another lead magnet or now you add another email and now you add a retargeting campaign there is plenty of things that can be done but one step at a time and first know how you in your business make money and then figure out the rest. Exactly. And that's and then you have a system. And then you can market and send money to it. And you can measure and you know how much will convert uh, from lead to paying clients. Beautiful. So um, there's one more thing, I think. You have a podcast, uh, ladies. What is this about? Yes, uh, we have a podcast. It's called Fabulous Entrepreneurs. And we created it um, this year in order to reach uh, women and help them out, give them tips like the ones that we've shared here, so that they can um, they can you know build a better online presence. And uh, we're very actually um, very excited about this podcast. We've uh, created it with our full heart <laughs> because we know um, how difficult it is for some people when they're starting up their business and it can be very discouraging if they don't have the right motivation, the right planning and the right system behind it. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's called Fabulous Women Entrepreneurs and you can find us in um, about 11 platforms at the moment. Wow, great. And we will make sure that the, the link to your podcast will also be uh, visual at the ad that we always add, add at the end of this uh, talk show. So people can see the link that, uh, and follow you with the podcast. Anything else, ladies, that we have not discussed or anything you would like to add to the conversation or you want to invite? Yeah, if... Uh some ladies that feel that we could help them in uh, leveling up their web presence so that it really monetizes on the lots of effort that is put in there 
we encourage you to go to inspireworks.ch, which is from Switzerland, inspireworks.ch, and do the assessment there, and uh, so that we can get back to you with a personalized analysis. And also, you're invited to join our Facebook groups, which is also called Fabulous Women Entrepreneurs, and get inspired um, and know that you can do it. It's just to have the right system and the right uh, mindset, and nothing will stand between you and success. Wow. So, ladies, we all know now where to go. And uh, I thank you so much. I think this is a theme that, sh that, that women, you know, they, they think it's complicated, it's difficult. You girls make it easy. And I think every business should have something like this in, in place. Um, whether you sell online products, whether you sell offline products, it's always important to start a conversation and to engage. And often that starts online. So thank you so much, uh, Nadine and Judelki. And uh, ladies, I hope uh, our viewers have you, you've uh, learned something today. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you, Tina. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you for having us. Bye bye. <laughs>